the industry is under-policed, the rate of serious injury is way too high, and conditions in many woolsheds are just making things worse. Charlotte King reports there are concerns employers are taking advantage of lax conditions for their own benefit. I was born in the industry. My dad was a shearer. Um, used to hang out in the sheds as a kid. All I wanted to do was be a shearer. I've had breaks between, so it's on and off. But yeah, I wouldn't do anything else but she. I get next to another bloke my age, nearly 60, and we're gonna race all day. Rob Harrowfield is a rare breed. He's a lifetime shearer and one of just 3,000 Australians who's still making a living out of it. Sheep numbers are at their lowest point in a century and the shearing workforce is in decline. The 57-year-old says the job's getting harder for those who are left. But as far as conditions with safety, I think it's worse now than what it used to be. Not having fresh um, running water rather than washing in a bucket, not having toilets, uh, not having proper harness holders somewhere to put your harness up and not having safety buttons to turn off equipment if it locks up or um, overhead headgear. A lot of places still have the old shaft driven gear which you can get caught up in and they don't have any protective guards on them. Before the shearing contractors would do something about it. Nowadays shearing contractors don't because they're too scared that if they say anything they're going to rock the boat and they'll end up losing the shed. This is an MRI of your lumbar spine. You can see here, this is your spinal cord. Sue Parker so has spent cord. most of this year on the couch, unable to move without help. She says she was dragging a sheep in a pen when the ewe became caught in metal grating on the floor. And I do remember like feeling a little pain down my leg and it sort of shot right, right down to my leg. And I pushed on and yeah, struggled for the rest of the day. And by the time that night time came around, I could hardly walk. And then the next few days I tried pushing on, like just doing minor stuff, and it just got worse and worse to the fourth day, I couldn't walk at all. And so you can see the nerve roots here, which are the, the nerve roots which supply the nerves to your legs. Yeah. And you can see the, the injuries the caused a disc in her lower back to blow out, and she's required to get surgery to fix it. Okay, you, you go to work and you think, okay, yeah, the worst, you know, you might get a little bit of a backache, or just anything. But I've only been in it for four years. It's not like it's wear and tear, and that was the bit that annoyed me. Like, it's from something that shouldn't have been there. The industry's research and marketing arm, Australian Wool Innovation, collects compulsory levies from 61,000 wool growers. This year, the grower-funded body partnered with Dubbo shearing contractor Hilton Barrett to build a state-of-the-art shed in New South Wales. 80 or 90 per cent of the sheds need an upgrade um, if we want to keep staff in the industry. So we're at record low numbers with sheep. So every million sheep that it goes up, we need 80 staff to uh, look after those million sheep. And at this stage, I don't see that happening unless some serious stuff is done with infrastructure. AWI has made the design available to wool growers for free. So far, fewer than half a dozen people have asked for them. Others are making improvements on their own. It's no secret that shearing is dangerous and it's up to wool growers and contractors to keep conditions safe. But the ABC has been told by dozens of wool workers that when it comes to regulation, they're operating in a black hole. Shearing is on average at least six times more likely to cause injury than the average Australian workplace. Industry experts believe official figures could be even worse because many injuries aren't reported. The consequences can be catastrophic. In 2017, a woman was scalped when her hair became caught in overhead shearing machinery. Safe Work New South Wales has confirmed it's launched legal action. Apparently they couldn't figure out why no one wanted to use the toilet. The 
workplaces are individual wool sheds scattered across private farmland. What's wrong with it? I can't see anything wrong with it. Although they're covered by state-based safety laws, workers say those rules are rarely enforced. And that's our drinking water too. Look at the colour of it. But poor working conditions are not the only issue. Rob Harrowfield says some of the people running shearing teams are actively flouting the law. Look, there's always been drugs in the sheds ever since I started. You know, there was blokes that used to smoke a bit of weed after work and always big drinkers. Always. All the shearers. You know, drink killed my dad, you know. But now they do it during work. They'll go out a smoker in the car or they go outside and they'll smoke some weed or whatever. Or, as I am, pretty naive, I asked these guys one day why this marijuana pipe was made of glass. And they said, oh, Rob, mate, that's ice, you know. And, but, yeah, I see it a lot. He's one of several insiders in the wool industry who've told the ABC that in some cases, contractors are paying shearers in drugs. So... They get a certain amount in wage and a certain amount of drugs. They're making money out of it, the, the, the shearing con contractor, but they're keeping that person um, basically on a leash to them so that if they need things done that most of us won't do, as in shearing weekends, shearing wet sheep, you know, um, she shearing sheep that should be crutched and aren't, aren't crutched and whatever, these people will, will do it because they are on. Jason Letchford is the head of the Shearing Contractors Association, the industry body representing those who run the shearing teams. You know, I've heard that story, the fact that story's out there is like, well, who, who are the people engaging that, that so-called shearing contractor or contractor, whatever state you want to call it, to, to do that? I mean, it, it's, it's ludicrous and crazy. I mean, that, the person engaging them is, is breaking laws at every level. The president of the grower advocacy body, Wool Producers Australia, is Ed Storey. He says it's the first time he's heard the allegation. That has never been raised with wool producers before that contractors are supplying uh, illicit and illegal drugs. Uh, we absolutely, in the strongest possible terms, condemn that practice if that's happening. Mr Storey says it's in producers' own interests that they have shearing facilities that are fit and ready for work. Most of them, in, in most sheds Australia, are excellent. Uh, there's always a few that could do with a bit of improvement. We certainly encourage those people uh, and those growers to uh, present their workplace in a manner in which they're very proud. He's encouraged farmers to invest in improving conditions for shearers, but says there's no need for increased regulation. Employees that supply labour have a choice. They can stay in the shearing industry or they can choose another industry. And that's something we absolutely don't want. We value shearers very much. Uh, we need them to harvest the wool. Sheep prices are good and, and wool prices have been good. So should there be spare money available to, and, and it should be an investment priority of farmers and wool growers to present their wool shed and upgrade it. The price of wool was falling. Shearing has a long history in Australia and its wool sheds have been fault lines in industrial relations. We will break the shearers union. Shearers helped create one of the nation's most powerful unions, the Australian Workers' Union. And the 1891 Shearers' strike ultimately led to the formation of the Australian Labor Party. For decades, wool sheds were under the control of the Australian Workers' Union. It was very, very staunch, and uh, shearers didn't like you working in a shearing shed if you weren't a member of the union, because they strongly believed that the union would fight for us and get us the conditions and the awards that we were getting, so the least you can do is join the union. But the industrial wide gear or wide comb dispute of the 1980s brought the union's power to a grinding halt. We threw our tickets away and that's it. Um, after that, that's when everything started to fall to pieces. Shane Rulston is the AWU's national organiser. There are plenty of farmers who do the right thing and have got good sheds, but um, unfortunately that's no longer the, the, the clear majority. You know? I have to say most sheds are substandard right now. He's acknowledged reports that some contractors are paying shearers in a combination of drugs and cash. We encourage our members, if they, if they find out about that, they should contact the police. You know, it's against the law. It's bad enough being paid in cash, but let alone having, you know, 
cannabis provided as a subsidy to, to workers. I understand that it's that it occurs. I think the nature of the industry, the remoteness, generally the small crews allows it to, to occur. We're not saying it's okay and the AW doesn't support it in any way, shape or form. You know, workplaces should be drug free. Yeah, just uh, something that bugs me a bit. But members have complained that the union has dropped the ball. You boast your power using our industry, yet you ignore it. That's not good enough. You were made from strength, which was us guys, our strength. Yet you turned your back on us. I don't accept the AW sitting back and watching it happen. And, you know, the right of entry laws and the Fair Work Act makes actually accessing workplaces like shearing sheds much harder. All right, I'm just going to go through a list of the medications that you have to take on the morning of the surgery and the ones that you should be holding as well. Sue Parker has returned to the wool sheds as a roustabout and says she's hoping to start shearing sheep under 60 kilograms next year. She says the flooring in the shed where she was injured has not yet been replaced. At the moment, there is the shearing industry is losing people and no one wants to start because why would you want to do that? You know, you might enjoy it, but what, at what cost? Every other industry's got to pull into line. Why is the shearing industry a law unto itself? Rob Harrowfield says workers are still too afraid to demand better conditions. No one says boo, they just do it. They just shear the sheep, you get your money, you go home and who cares? You know, so and so just lost a finger or um, you know, cut himself out, fell off the board or whatever happened, you know. And I'm one of them. And we're all complaining about it and we're all sick of it. We're sick and tired of the rubbish and I'm a fool because I should have done this years ago.